I'm gonna take you and show you three other electrical metering setups, one residential and two commercial, so you can get a broader perspective of what components look like, their uses and installations, as well as requirements and regulations around installations. Hi, I'm Joel Walsman. I'm the CEO and Master Electrician of Jefferson Electric. In previous videos, we've been looking at wiring inside of the home. Now we're bringing you outside of the home to look at how power gets to your home. This is going to be the first of four videos, so follow us through the mini-series. Here you have the meter base or meter cabinet. This is actually a three-gang, also known as a multi-gang meter cabinet. The accessory gangs are available for like utility programs, connected to electric vehicle charging, or maybe a space that's whittled out of the home and independently metered for an Airbnb or an in-laws quarters. In this case, the utility distribution system is behind the home in the alley, which is really common. And the metering and service equipment are located on the detached garage. So from the utility pole in the alley, the power feeds underground to the meter cabinet. It feeds the center lugs of the meter cabinet, which then supply power to each of the meter sockets. The meter socket that's active, as you can see here, is actually also equipped with solar energy. There are 16 solar panels on the south side of the home, and this is a bi-directional meter, as indicated by the arrow, feeding power both directions, excess power from the home to the utility, and supplying power from the utility to the home in the traditional way. Follow us for more solar energy exploration with upcoming series. Currently, Jefferson Electric, about 60% of our work is in renewable energy. Below the active meter socket, we have a 200 amp disconnect. There's a outdoor rated enclosure to house the electrical equipment so it's all safe from the effects of water and weather. This 200 amp switch will shut off power to the entire home. Some home homeowners will elect to put a lock on that to prevent tampering. As you can see, the utility has placed seals on each of the lids of the meter cabinet to prevent tampering. So how does power get to this point? Well, as we said, it, it comes down off the pole, underground, it's four inch conduit coming up into a what's called a swedge adapter. This is Schedule 80 conduit. So the difference between Schedule 80 and 40 real quick, Schedule 40 is a lighter weight conduit. As you can see, SCH 80 PVC. That's a heavier wall conduit that is more suitable for sustaining physical damage, given the fact that this is an exposed installation as, as all would be. Um, there's energized wire on the other side of this pipe that needs to be well protected. The power then exits this 200 amp disconnect and goes underground to the house. Here we have another example of a residential electrical service. This one, as opposed to being underground, is overhead. So this is the service riser. The utility distribution system is overhead. It drops overhead to the house. The uh, service riser brings power into the meter cabinet. You can see for a 100 amp service, which is what this is, the meter cabinet is much smaller. So this is a single gang, 100 amp overhead electrical service. Real quick, what is the other equipment hovering around this electrical service? These gray boxes are all communications and data. They have nothing to do with the power coming into the home. They are distinct and separate. This half inch EMT conduit that's kind of rusting out, this is the grounding system for this 100 amp service. This auxiliary conduit coming out of the right side of the meter feeds power out to the detached garage. This conduit coming out of the bottom, this is an inch and a quarter PVC conduit that carries 100 amp feed into the main panel inside the house. There are a couple actually uh, violations taking place here. And uh, you might say that this electrical service is grandfathered in. Some things that wouldn't fly with a current installation are, there's inadequate clearance from the edge of the meter cabinet to the edge of the home. In our utility, that should be three feet. There's inadequate clearance from the edge of the meter cabinet to the operable portion of the window. That should also be three feet. The height of the meter is actually in good shape. Um, 
The height requirement to the top of the meter is between five feet and six feet. This falls right about five and a half feet, so that's in great shape. From here, we're going to look at two commercial installations to further illuminate metering equipment and electrical services.